and before TMZ, I was actually a paparazzi. And before that, I was just a, a photojournalist. And I learned, like, I worked with the New York Post, Bloomberg, being a force when it comes to building relationships. And I think a lot of times people don't realize how important the relationships is just like the work itself. And I believe when you are the best, you don't just sit at one level, right? It doesn't matter how good you are. We're always, as a high achiever, trying to be better and better and better. We're out for blood. Like I had a set one time with just, and I, I hate to say like numbers, but like I had to say um, Angelina Jolie in New Orleans and we did like over 300,000 like the first two days. Wow. So the, the, the photo, the monies back then for um, exclusive photos were insane. This is such an important topic because you mentioned something like we all have this mobile phone and you often see people sitting at restaurants and they like on their phone and they're not talking to each other. This is one of the most important things that we're going away from because of AI. AI is amazing and it's still, you know, it's going to be where, where everything is, where the business is going in the next 10, 15, 20 years, two years right now. But if you, if, if you understand and allow yourself to still have that um that human touch to storytelling i know you had a little conversation with brad pitt where he gave you some unforgettable advice so i had told him like i have you know a hell of a documentary and i know you hear this a lot and you know so we so we started talking and he was just like you know what makes you what makes your story so fucking unique you know and i told him <laughs> And then he was like, okay. And then he gave me the person, the exact person to send it to. Wrote it down, wrote down the phone number and everything. No mercy. Guys, welcome to another episode of the Million Dollar Branders podcast. Today we have a trailblazing guest who I actually think is one of the most interesting we've had on here. So meet Colin. He's a street journalist with a rich background in traditional and social media, a former force behind TMZ's political coverage. He now empowers companies and individuals to craft content and cash in on their expertise. It's such an honor to have him on the show. With Colin's finger on the pulse of trends and tech, he's now the go-to guru for amplifying online presence and widening audience reach. So guys, if you don't follow him, make sure you stalk him on Instagram, get his details. And I'm so excited for this interview, Colin, because I really believe that you embody the essence of tenacity and passion in your craft. We've seen you be on anything from like red carpets to the street corner. You, you've really got like this get up and go drive. But firstly, tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you get into TMZ and your backgrounds and growing up? I want to hear how you started. All right. Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me, Justine. And you're somebody, you know, I really believe in and learned so much from as well. And just, you know, following your journey and what you give back to other people has been, so it's been, been great. So um, for me, uh, I'm a unique type of, uh, I would say, when it comes to as journalists, because uh, working with TMZ, it didn't start out that way in the beginning. Yet, like I got on with them when they were doing something different. And before TMZ, I was actually a paparazzi. And before that, I was just a, a photojournalist. And I learned, like I worked with the New York Post, Bloomberg, um, wow. AP. So a, a lot of the things that I've learned to do was like basically storytelling with a camera. And once I, I, I realized where things were going with celebrity photos and the money that was being made over there, I switched and, you know, that path was more exciting and just where everything was going. So, um, you know, then I realized because of the cell phones, 
then all of a sudden photos that was worth a lot of money back then, like we used to do, um, like I had a set one time with just, and I, I hate to say like numbers, but like I had a set of um, Angelina Jolie in New Orleans and we did like over 300,000, like the first two days. Wow. So the, the, the photo, the monies back then for um, exclusive photos were insane. But because of like iPhones and everything, it started becoming a part where a lot of the celebrities, they would take um, photos of themselves. Like say for instance, if Rihanna changes her hair color, she would take a photo and then she would put it on um, Twitter and then the magazines and uh, TV shows and you know overseas and everybody, they didn't have to buy it anymore. They could just grab it off of there. So I started seeing the value of the prices going, but I noticed the video was starting to become big. And it was hard to send out at first, but I just, you know, I realized, and then TMZ had just started. So, and they were doing something different. It wasn't the same run of the mill type of interviews. So I liked what they were doing and then became a part of, you know, at first I used to just sell them videos and then in any type of like good company, what they do is instead of continuing to buy from people, they just buy the company. So then they bought me and then I, you know, learned a lot from what they were doing. And I learned something, um, what I would say, what kind of, I, I noticed one thing what really drew me to them. Um, and this was in the beginning when they had big videos and I knew the value, I knew the prices of them and I knew they were giving it away. So I was just like, wow, that's crazy. They were giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars from a video to mm -hmm. all the other outlets, ABC, NBC, all. So I was just like, I didn't get it at first. But as I grew in, with the company, I realized what they were doing. They were branding themselves. So they were giving that those exclusive videos away and all the TV shows were running it, but they had to run it with the TMZ logo. So they were promoting TMZ and instead of cash in, and you know, uh, uh, making a million dollar off of some of these videos at that time, that's how much videos were, were going for, like a big exclusive one, the Mel Gibson one, all the big ones. Wow. They were giving it away and just making the television, other channels promote them in the team. And that's what helped um, get them to that level. So a lot of the things like the, the, the tricks and understanding is what I've developed over there and started um, you know, being a force when it comes to building relationships. And I think a lot of times people don't realize how important the relationships is just like the work itself and, you know, knowing how to switch and, you know, uh, talk to people and get on the level with them where they're going to give you not just tips, but long lasting relationships. So. Absolutely. And this is how I know you. I mean, I know we just had such awesome rapport when we met yeah. in the day. And this is such an important topic because you mentioned something like we all have this mobile phone and you often see people sitting at restaurants and they're like on their phone and they're not talking to each other. So what is the key to building an amazing relationship and really building that rapport? I mean, you, you talked about telling stories with the camera, but how do you how do you get that relationship to really shine and pop when it comes to doing video or interviews or that type of thing? Yeah, that's a good question because uh, uh, and I think this is one of the most important things that we're going away from because of AI. AI is amazing and it's still you know is going to be where where everything is where the business is going in the next 10, 15, 20 years, two years right now. Mm -hmm. But if you if if you understand and allow yourself to still have that um, that human touch to storytelling, but making it where a person can uh, visualize that like the story is about them and and it's coming you're, you're humanizing you know the person is the same way when like when I came and worked on Capitol Hill like all I did at that point was just celebrity 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 I didn't know anything about I didn't know anything about politicians I couldn't tell you a congressman from a senator well I didn't know anything I'm being, being honest but what I realized and what I told them and what I sold them is I don't care anything about the political stuff whether you're a Republican Democrat what I want to be able to do is um, humanize you and humanizing you in a, in a sense of showing a different um, angle of what you do that doesn't have anything to do with politics. So outside of the Beltway here in D.C., your constituents back home will know you. 
you know, because it's going to be something fun. It's going to be, you know, you or if it's something that's groundbreaking in the story that I have to do, that's going to be different. But just overall, it's going to be something that can you can relate to. And, you know, uh, in the first time I remember having like a real super high um politician tell me he was just like he said i could have cured cancer and went on cnn and i wouldn't have got as much exposure like when i get on tmz and he's he asked me he's like he asked me why is that and what i told him is um and this is before a lot of them really understood it i said when you can take away a different audience and bring them into the pop culture you affect more people than just staying in your same lane every day of just being a politician so people are starting to know you outside. So it's that crossover effect. And it's the same thing when like a music artist, a country singer goes and does a pop song with her or with a rapper, you get to bring in both people's audience and it just amplifies your voice and your um, your brand and it makes you a lot bigger. So I had to start really selling that to them. And then they, you know, instead of like just popping up with a camera and, you know, they're thinking it's a hit job you know, and they started getting a better understanding and they seen the questions and I wouldn't like talk to them ahead of time. It was like trying to be more just on the point where, where you get them and, and the ones that do really well are people who just be themselves and you don't have to, you know, cause whatever comes up, we try, like I said, when you humanize somebody, you're just letting them be them. And so and it's conversations that are just play itself out. And if it's a good, if it's a good topic, if I prepared well, and if it's something that's important of like what's happening at the moment, those are the ones that always worked. I love it. And you've had so much experience just with the storytelling and also I think asking a good question, right? So let's go into questions. Like how do you ask a really good question what goes through your mind to make people stop in their tracks and go wow you know I'm really like I'm compelled to answer that and give that natural connective side of themselves so in this, in this, I'm gonna answer this two ways right because sometimes just like you say I have to stop them in their track right so a lot of times so just so I'll give two scenarios when it, it can be an a-lister it can be just a regular person and you know, like if I didn't have a relationship with them, what's going to make them stop and talk to me and I'm pulling on the camera, they don't know me, they don't know if it's just a hit job or whatever it is. So a lot, a lot of times I would say something that I know they're going to relate to. So if it's someone who, let's just say, I know like I read their bio, I know some so many things about them beforehand that, you know, is going to like why, like it's going to be something that not the average um, reporter is gonna ask them about, like, let, let's just say, this is the number one thing, right? If it's a politician, I'm not asking a political question. If it's a sports person, I'm not asking a sports question. I'm gonna, like, if it's a sports person, I'm gonna ask them something about music, hip hop, or if it's a politician, I'm gonna ask them something about sports. So, so right then, I'm gonna break into, take them away from their, their normal, feel of what they know but I'm going to know like now if this is an actor and I know this person went to USC and I'm going to say something about USC like why is it they get so many donations and the alma maters like so into them so that's going to make them want to defend USC because that's their school so now like that, that just starts the conversation. But my real goal is I want to say something about a particular film they did. So I'm not going to come right out with it because maybe it was a bad film or maybe it's something that's coming up. It won't stop them in their track. But yeah. if I say something about USC first and get them talking, then I got them, right? And then I can bring in the film and then I can bring in whatever question I really want to, you know, go at and angle it to that way. But the, the, the best times to get something that's going to go in, um, not just I get a question from them, because I don't, it doesn't matter how good that person is or who they are. If it's not something of importance of like right now what's happening with something that's trending, something that mm. people didn't know about them, you're breaking the story. That's when it does real well. And that's what makes stuff go viral. And, um, you know, it, it, other, other news stations pick up on it. So you start figuring out things like how can, what can I say that can, you know, they can answer it. And, you know, like one, like when I asked Oprah 
about you know the, the amount of money she makes. I mean, how, I didn't ask her how much she makes. I asked her what is the amount of money most people always ask you for, right? Uh, so she well, for a second. Uh, it's like yeah, wow. She's like, that's a good question. And then she <laughs> answered. She was just like, when I was at this stage in my career, people would ask me for three thousand dollars. Then once I got to here. <laughs> It was ten thousand. Then when I got to here, she said, "Now it's nothing less than fifty thousand dollars." People ask me for, yeah. right? So that went a lot of places. So like yeah. all the like money channels, the business, the pop culture. So that that was like a, a crossover question because of who she was, but it tackled different things as well. I so. love it. It's like it's almost like breaking into someone's heart space, right? To get into their yeah. mind space to just tip it over the edge and I know you had a little conversation with Brad Pitt where he gave you some unforgettable advice and I think it would be so inspirational for our viewers to hear this I just think it's so cool that you you had that valued conversation with him but can you elaborate on that yeah so um like I, I see a lot of I see a lot of celebrities and high profile people so sometimes like after I ask them questions and put like I'll ask them questions off off camera, you know, off the record and I'll talk to them. So I know with Brad Pitt, I know like I've worked on Brad Pitt a lot and I know he's cool. Right. And he has a, um, a, a film production company, which he does real well. Most people don't know that his like he really does like he he seeds out the, the scripts and the different um, projects that come to him. So I had told him before, like, you know, I'm putting together a documentary and, you know, not like I didn't want to go to somebody else in his, you know, in his company, because I could just easy go and Google who's the, the point of connection and do all that. But nothing's better than catching somebody right there and you get them like, look, I have this script that you have to see, you yeah. know. And, you know, I want you to know the name of it. I know what you, I want you to give me the person, the direct person, who's the right person I need to send this to. Yeah. So when, when, if you're confident enough to, and this is, this is the one thing that what I've always noticed about like people who get to that next level versus, because, you know, in any industry, you're going to see people who are way smarter than the person who really makes it or more talented, right? Yeah. But the ones that are really bold, the ones that aren't afraid to ask somebody when they see them for help or for a favor or can you do this or not not be arrogant about how good they are, but say how good they are. Like, yeah. I'm a reason why your company's not getting to that next level. I need to do your branding. I need to do that. And when you say that, it will make people think it will like this person really might be good, you know. So I had told him, like, I have, you know, a hell of a documentary and I know you hear this a lot. And, you know, so, I, so we started talking and he was just like, you know, what makes you, what makes your story so fucking unique, you know? And I told him <laughs> and then he was like, okay. And then he gave me the person, the exact person to send it to, wrote it down, wrote down the phone number and everything. So, you know, and, and, and now I have a relationship with them and we're right. going over some things. So it's times when you figure out like, um, and this is, I'm not gonna say you're gonna meet any celebrity or this person or whatever. It's the same way when you're doing business deals, when you see a company that you wanna work for, when you have the opportunity, you have to, you know, uh, you have to make yourself memorable in their eyes. You know, they can't, especially if it's people who are so busy or they are next level, you know, they they get pitched so many times. They get from family members to emails, so all these different things. Yeah. How do you have to figure out how do you stand out? And I, that's something I'm like not afraid to, you know, talk and ask and say and, you know, figure out how do I get in. I so. love that. You're, you're talking my language because I've got this. Yeah. <laughs> you go big or you go home yeah. <laughs> or a hundred no. or nothing. That's it. And I love the boldness of everything that you do. I think it's important. I just maybe it's my immigrant background, but I just believe if you don't ask, you don't get. And every opportunity not asked for is an opportunity lost. So but what are the most common mistakes do you think people make when let's talk about online presence? So I'm going to say online presence and offline presence because I'm yeah. sure you can both. Same. Yeah, I, I, I see one of the um, and I don't want to say I, I, I think being right now the, when what's really working and everybody has this is vulnerability. 
right? If you're vulnerable in your story on how you teach something and okay. not only um, like, t it, it, this is the thing. Most people will say, this is how you do this or do this. I can say what works for me, right? I can say, I can go and talk to somebody. I'm not saying you can, you do it, but I'm just telling you what works for me. And me going and saying, and me being vulnerable, me telling a story, or like I, I can tell people in a second, you know, I've been raised by a single mom who worked two jobs and who I lived in the projects in the hardest part of Brooklyn, New York, one of the most, you know, infested drug areas, everything like that. Um, and she sent me to private school and to get a better education and she sacrificed it. And what did I do? I turned around and I thought I, I was smarter than everybody and I got entangled with drugs coming up because I saw the fast money and uh, I had a little more edge than most of the other kids my age. And it was a, a, a time in when crack cocaine was running just in the area and you were seeing and making $10,000, $50,000 as a kid, you know, you wanted to get your way out of there. But, you know, I learned my lesson. I paid my debt to society and I've never been in trouble again in life. And sometimes people can hear a, a story about, you know, what you do, but it had taken me a long time to want to even talk about that because I felt like, you know, the industry that I'm in, I don't want to put that out there. And, you know, I'm trying to climb the corporate ladder and people will look down on you and they won't give you a chance. And not until I realized like, shoot, I already, I, I feel like I've made it because, you know, I've never got in trouble again in my life. And would, would it help someone else who feels like, because the most, the, the, the thing what separates um, people who come from despair and who, you know, been in trouble or, you know, been on drugs or alcohol or relationships, or all these problems, when they don't see somebody who are like them in that situation come up, they don't think it's achievable. You know, That's it's right. like, yeah. So, you know, I, I felt like sometimes like I can talk to some people and explain to them, like, you really can get past that. You know, you just have to have, you know, we all start from the belief system at first. But if we don't see other people who've come from that, you don't think it's possible. And you're not like, why am I going to be the first one where it happens for, you know, because it's, it's always you always feel like, you know, you didn't achieve certain goals like other people could have, if, but if you were in a better opportunity. So, you know, storytelling. And the one thing I see what to answer your question, what people don't do, and this is with online and um, just making content and everything, is if you're teaching or you're trying to um, have uh, sell a service or a product, like you have to put yourself into it. People buy from people, not just that. Right. See, there was it was it was it was like this before. It was people um, buy from people that they know. That you know, it was like who who were you before, and they then it turned to a, a different part now where people are buying from who they who they actually like, and this is why small businesses online are just like really growing, and you're starting to see individuals. And I, and I think when you can come to the way how you like kind of mesh your story into your product or service and let people like really dig into like, because the one thing and I, and I, and, um, I, I noticed online, like people live vicariously through your, through your profile. Totally. Like they they okay. will just go. Yeah. And it's not, you don't have to have like a huge audience or anything like that. You're going to have people that may not never like follow you or comment, but yeah. they constantly know you. And, and if you're doing something right on there and you're giving yourself, you know, and they feel like, you know, do I pick this or do I buy from this person? They're going to go to you because they spent seven hours on with your content, knowing you, and they feel like they like you're the person they want to give their money to, or they believe in, or they want to give you a chance. That's another thing too. There's a lot of times when you can have somebody who has money, they can be like, I'm not giving it to corporate. I want to spend my, this person had a hard life. I want to help them. And, you know, but if they don't know that, if you didn't, if you weren't vulnerable and you wanted to act like everything is gravy and you're not taking any losses and, you know, it's just la, 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 I'm just scrolling and I'm winning and I'm, you know, not, so you don't get that opportunity. You don't get the help. You don't, or you don't ask for it as well. So sometimes, you know, like I'm, I'm in a stage right now and I'm going to start putting, look, this week you're going to start seeing me put out content, right? Because 
honestly, I've been mad because since I left TMZ recently, I, yeah. I have a lot of connections, right? But I can't get into a political party and do marketing for them because they're giving that, these contracts out to the good old boy system, to the people who have been donating to the campaigns and doing all that stuff where I'm way more talented than them. And I call up them and I'll tell those people who, you know, who are making the decisions. So they're giving these huge contracts to a lot of these people. And these damn ads and these campaigns are garbage. And I'm looking at them and I'm texting them, telling them, say, that's trash, that's terrible, it's not moving. But yet they're still giving it to those people. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to sit there. And so I'm going to make content about that and just say, I feel like I can do better than this. I can do this. and I can. So maybe somebody's going to, I can just start putting out free um, campaigns and do it in a way where I can say, maybe if this person would have did this, this would have got more engagement. Maybe if they would have did this, just to showcase the talent that I think I do have and that I know I have. Yes. So. Hey guys, so if you are enjoying this episode, if you have gotten value from this episode and it has changed your life by teaching you things, I'm going to ask you a huge favor. If you would subscribe, like, follow and share with people so we can bring more incredible guests to the Million Dollar Branders podcast to serve you better so you can make more money in your business, in your life and accelerate your growth into becoming the million dollar brand that I know is possible for you. Thank you and my greatest appreciation to you. There's so much you touched on there. I'm just like, I'm really sitting in awe. So let's rewind a bit. Firstly, I want to say what an inspiration you are to so many people around the world because I can't imagine what you went through in your childhood and then turning your life around. Just wow. So thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. I love and I'm going to touch on it again, how bold you are. And I think even when it comes to bettering yourself with what the things that I know about you, you know, in terms of work, in terms of self-development, in terms of getting to the next level. And I believe when you are the best, you don't just sit at one level, right? It doesn't matter how good you are. We're always as a high achiever trying to be better and better and better. What advice would you give to someone who's kind of stuck in a rut, but that needs to be bold in order to stand out because we're living in it's just an age where we're inundated with so much media now and yeah. it can almost it's it's like actually like social media anxiety I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of people suffer with this and it's mainly because sometimes we are living vicariously through other people right like we are looking at other people going they're doing so well they're doing this they're doing that so what advice would you give to someone just stuck in that right that wants to be better, wants to be bolder, to pull themselves out? That's a um, good thing. To, to, so I, that's a great question because so many of us go through it. And even the ones that are successful at a time, they realize like, I should be in a better place than I am. I'm living, I'm making X amount of, and I've spoken to them off camera. I speak to managers, I speak to the stars. So, cause I, I'm always, I just want to figure out like, like, what did they do to get there? Like, what am I doing wrong? You know, and I'll ask. And the, the, the one thing I get from them, what they do, and what a lot of us who are stuck in that time is their productivity level is the one thing. They say, and, and, I, and I've talked to, listen, I've talked to billionaires, I've talked to millionaires, right? Mm -hmm. And they will always say, you have the same thing that I have. Right. I'm like, oh, no, I don't have billions. I don't have billions. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and they laugh. Right? And I go, I go, they say, say, say no, it's, it's time. And I know how like it sounds just like, oh, whoop de doo, whoop de doo. Everybody, everybody says it, but they mean it. And just think of it like when a president's when his day, his schedule comes out, right? It's to the minutes, to the minutes, to the minutes. It's and it's just so he could get so much done. You know, if you don't have money, you have time, mm -hmm. right? So how do you use your time? How do you get out of that rut? You start using a schedule, you start figuring out, and you say what you're going to do. If I accomplish just one thing today, it's a win for me. You know, like for me right now, this week, my win has been I'm taking sugar out of my every the things I eat now. I'm 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 going away from that, right? So that's a win for me. Now tomorrow and the next three days, 
I'm going to put different little things in there because I, I started realizing I have to get my productivity up if I want to start scaling to the level and getting and start getting these big campaigns that they're giving to other people. So I'm doing something wrong. So how do I get out of that rut? I start making more content and not worrying about the numbers of the viewers that get it. because eventually this is the thing. And one of the biggest deals that I've gotten, right, have been from one of my smallest videos. And I'll say this, I get millions of, I get, I've gotten videos, I've got going crazy viral, I get good engagement, I get things. But one of my smallest videos got me one of my biggest contracts. Because all it has to do, you know, when you're, you're literally one video away from re reaching the right person or somebody that audience that's just, is just going to hit and i don't say the video has to hit and it goes viral it can hit where someone can introduce you to the right person and then it just changes the trajectory of your life and you start seeing things open up for you and what you've always had the talent and the skill set that can now like people can see it so you know when you're stuck in a, a specific rut and you don't think like you're getting ahead you need to change your productivity. You need to, you know, use the time that you have, whether it's you, you're going to sleep two hours later and you're waking up two hours earlier. You know, you got to, you know, it's just like when I post, if I post and I feel like, okay, I grew, you know, 2,000 followers this week, right? And I only post three times. I, I, I say, damn, imagine if I would post six times. I could have doubled that. I could have gotten, you know, so if I want to be aggressive, I got to go aggressive for 60 or 90 days and then test. And then you start seeing, you'll get the outcomes. You put it in, you'll start getting the outcomes. I love it. And I don't know who's listening to this, but I'm ready to do like a 12K run. I don't know what that is yeah. in, in American terms, but you've definitely motivated me. And this, we're already, I mean, can't even believe it. We're already in June. So like for the next, next six months, what are your yeah. three top tips to excel with one's brand, with one's content for our audience? I know we've discussed a lot, but if you could only pick three to go out and get them, what would they be? Uh, I, I, I would concentrate heavily on Black Friday, right? That would be number one. So whatever you do, if you're, if you're a business owner, whether you sell a service or a product, right? Black Friday, the fourth quarter should be your goal because you can make up for all your mistakes, which you did this previous okay. six months. Behind. If you are, if you are intense and you get to that level with like, I'm giving myself 90 days of going hard, June, July, and August, right? You know, by September and October, you're going to start flowing. So you're going to go into black um fourth quarter, Black Friday, all that stuff where most of the money is made in business. Right. So if you prepare yourself right now, forget everything that happened from um, January 1st to June 11th. Right. You can crush it for Black Friday for that month. And you can make all of that those mistakes plus more when getting real intentional about what you want to do. That would be the first thing I would do. The second thing I would do, I would start promoting myself. I would start promoting yourself. Nobody knows you like you know yourself and where you want to go, right? The thing about the ones that get to that next level and it's not, this this people always look like, oh, this person has a good manager. What does this person have? No, this person has a talent, but the talent picks the manager. So who you pick and who you associate yourself with, the, the engagement that you do, how you jump on other people's podcasts, how you support others, how the different things, right? That's going to get you to that level. That's going to help you six months from now, a year from now, might be a week from now. Because like I said, you, you know, when you're, when you walk in a room and I'm big on silent PR, silent yeah. PR is where people you get in the room before you're even there, before your face shows up in there, your, your physical body is there. People know about what you've done or what you're doing or what, who, like you're up next. And the third thing I would say is, and this has been, this has been my secret, right? This is what has helped me get to the next level in my career and what's working now is seeing talent, seeing talent ahead of time, being, knowing talent, knowing what's up next, not wait until a trend comes because 
it, once you start hearing about stuff in the nail salon, the beauty salon, and the barbershop, it's over, right? You got to hear it before it gets there, right? Don't jump on it then. It's too late. You're not going to, you have to start thinking and reading and, and doing when you're going into bed and, you know, not get on Netflix and like really digging it in, into your industry, into your craft. And when you get possessed of it, like, yo, I'm just, this is all, I sleep and breathe this right now because I want to make it to that level. And it's a different, just, I, I want people to really look, look at Tom Brady, the football player, what he's done, his career. He was possessed with that, right? And he got to that level and it wasn't talent. It wasn't just talent because he coming out of college and all those places, he wasn't a superstar. He wasn't, he was, he didn't even get drafted like that. He got drafted way late. You know, but he got he possessed this and it's all he did. And this can happen with anybody in any industry. That's the beauty of this. Now, information that you can get, you, you can apply it, you can test, you can go on different social media. Well, it's not working over here, you can work on another account. If that account isn't is stale, it's not growing. Guess what? You don't own you don't you didn't pay for it. You can start a new one that quick. And the thing about it, a lot of these new accounts, they are pushing them. I got like four different accounts, five different accounts. And the one that I started, I have one TikTok account, right? That I barely even post on. And it's the one that makes me the most money. And, it, and it's crazy. I post, I post like once uh once every three weeks. Wow. And it's millions of views. And it was something that I wasn't even, I didn't even make content about. So a lot of times you can find things by testing. So those opportunities. Are definitely there and i i will say man that you know um fourth quarter is everybody's business like it's it's, okay. it's it's part of business during that time but if you if you're strategic and you get intentional about like the numbers that you want to get to at that time and you start thinking and doing all these things you're going to start and uh and one one other um off thing what I, what i will say is and the where we're headed right now you have to become a master communicator. This is going to take people. This is what's going to separate. This is what's going to separate the millionaires from the billionaires, from the big companies to small business that can get there, but they don't have. If you have, if you can master communications, right, and have some type of communication skills, you are going to go so far right now. With everything is going to be AI, people aren't talking, but if you know how to get in front of the right people and talk to them or people refer you to others, you're going to go far. And so I think that's one of the biggest things. And you can learn communication skills. You don't have to be born with it. You can be an introvert. You can, Let me tell you something. You look at Bill Gates. Bill Gates is is uh, introvert is ever, but guess what? He makes a lot of those deals. He knows how to communicate to people. He knows what it takes to say, Hey, I can buy you. What, what do I need to do? What I, you know, and it's just understanding that. So this is where we're headed. And you do those things, you will have a good 2024 20, and go into 25. Oh, um, this, this, is, this has been amazing. Like I could talk to you all day, but also I think <laughs> you're going to burn a hole in my YouTube because this has been so brilliant. <laughs> So, thank you. And Colin, lastly, what is a million dollar brand to you? Oh, this million dollar brand is everything. I, 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 it, it, to me, it's like <clears throat> when I think of a million dollar brand, I, it, it's a feeling, right? It's a feeling what that brand gives me. And when I think about it, you know, when we look at Apple and this, this is an interesting thing what I learned about Apple and where, where I'm at in Virginia, right? This, it was the first Apple store and it was in, it was in a mall in Tyson's corner and inside the mall, when they opened up, Steve jobs wanted to like, it's a, there's a Ritz Carlton right across the street, right? He took all his managers and everybody and he sent them over to the Ritz Carlton because they gave the best service. Right. And he wanted that, because remember, when they first had an Apple store, people was like, people aren't just going to, people won't buy computers from a store. Right? Yeah. But he wanted them to have that feeling. And this is what a brand does. It gives you that, you know, uh, um, you have to feel something about it. And a million dollar brand is what's like when, 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 when I hear one and when I see one and when I know companies are going in that direction, you know, that's just something I'm, I'm attracted to. 
And it's just that that atmosphere, that feeling toward what it's creating and you want to be a part of it. I love it. And it's been so heartfelt, this interview. I know you've given so many people motivation, inspiration, and also aspiration. And I can't wait to see what you're doing next. Watch your documentary backed by Brad Pitt himself. And tell yes. us, how do, we, how do we get in touch with you? How do people connect with you? I know you're over social media, but what does the next few months look like? And how can people hire you, connect with you? Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm Ten G Colin on all platforms. Ten G Colin C O L I N, and I also have um, I do a lot of uh, one on ones, and I do you know group coaching, and uh, I'm have different websites where you could contact me and set up a a meeting, set up a call, Calendly. You could go to um, I have Ten G Agency dot com. Ten G Agency or growrichslow.com. So it's, it's two things, you know, you can contact me or I, I, I answer my DMs. I'm real, you know, on social media, um, I engage and I, I feel like that's where most of the transactions are going. And I just, you know, I, I just, I'm a firm believer when things are working, you have to like go with the flow and figure out, you know, how do I start learning as well? I love it. And it's so amazing to have you on the interview, Colin. I'm I'm sure it will not be the last we talk over the next few weeks and months yeah. and we'll be in touch. But guys, I I'm hope hoping to be on one of your stages soon. I'm hoping to be on uh, one of your stages. Oh, yeah. we, we're, <laughs> definitely, we're definitely making that happen. I think this connection is one that's going to go a long way. And just thank you for everything that you're doing in the world. And we will catch you soon. You've been amazing. Thanks, Colin. Thank you so much. All right.